Hi friends, welcome back to another itch.io free to play walkthrough. Today we have Dating as Hell, version 1.0. A cute game about how a magical girl gets kidnapped by her demonic non-binary nemesis. For what, you might ask, to go on a cute date. This won't end badly at all. Game content... Oh, I'm just reading the page. Game content may contain some triggering material. A list can be found at the following link. Trigger warnings. Stalking, abusive situations, death threats, kidnapping, violence, murder, and bad ends. Nothing could go wrong whatsoever. Uh, the music is Come Out and Play by Desperate Measures, and the song is Ch Chinese slash Japanese lyrics, Candy Town. And uh, I will always leave a link to the game in the description so you can find it for yourself slash support the creator. And if you like the video, please like and subscribe. I always appreciate that as well. Let's crack into this. Lilibel. Before we begin, please note this game has dark horror content that could potentially be triggering. The dev and I want to make absolute, absolute sure nobody's mental health suffers from, play, from this game. So in conclusion, would you like to see the trigger warnings for this game? No, thank you. I've already read them myself. Okay, well, let's get to th onto the game then. Good evening and afternoon, human. Welcome to episode 52 of Magical Girl Lilibel. And I'm Lilibel, your supreme defender of justice, who is today going to stab to death that one creep, Arifus. Arifus. They're really fucking evil. Trust me on this one. What is this? Arm. That is a crazy looking arm. Come on, I said, trust me. No, you look demonic. Okay, well let me elaborate, I guess. So this bitch, they, um, keep stalking me and my friends and rubbing their height in my face. And they constantly break into my room or steal my things. Oh, not, ah, oh, theft is bad. Once they made a little doll of me using my hair. Who knows what other evil shit they've been up to. I'm pretty sure it's a lie. So, put simply today, I'm going to fucking kill him. But first, no day is complete without a bowl of magical girl Little Bell's magical lily pad waffles. If you don't want to start your day with magical girl Little Bell's magical lily pad waffles, well, I don't really trust you, and we can't be friends because you're a fucking bitch. <laughs> hey, who turned off the lights? Ah, oh, good morning, my sweet princess. It's lovely to see you. Well, awaken with light-hearted eyes, for I, your charming majesty, is here to grace your beautiful eyes. Uh, actually, I? Huh, or is it eyes? Because your lovely bunny accessories also have eyes. Wink. Ah, <laughs> oh, is something wrong? Do you have a fever or something, my love? Rufius attempts to check Little Bell's temperature. But she suddenly lunges at their hand, attempting to bite it. Why would they do such a thing? In a split second, they retract their hand and gently wave a finger at Little Bell. Uh-uh-uh. I suppose I shouldn't have interrupted you during breakfast, huh? Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Aw, you look so cute glaring at me. Cat got your tongue? Or did a bunny get your tongue? Wait, the bunny got your eye. You're so confusing, little Bell dear. Hey, you there. Who's she talking to? Uh, who knows? <laughs> okay. I'm talking to you. Listen the fuck up. Okay, now that I have your attention, we need to brainstorm. I need to figure out how to kill them. But shockingly, my 688 attempts so far have all failed. Of course they weren't all televised. Anyway, things are different now. I have you now. So the thing is, how are we going to kill them? They are an evildoer and desperately need to die. I swear upon their stupid life. Eck, why are they dressed so nicely today? They're making fun of me, aren't they? Lilypad, my love. Are you okay? Eck! Oh my fucking gosh, I was thinking, they scared me. Why does the universe hate me? 
Why won't they stop this train of evil doing? Save. We're gonna save. I made a decision. I'm gonna start cry fucking crying if we don't figure something out fast. You need to help Lily Bell. What approach should be taken? Stabbed him with a fork. Stabbed them with a fork! Y yeah, you're right. I just have to. I'm glad we saved. In a sudden fluid motion, Little Bell propelled herself into the air, her hand snatching at a fork as she attempted to lunge at, at to lunge the demonic being. However, this wasn't that successful. That beer went down the wrong tube. Rufius quickly spun around and grabbed her by the back of her collar. Lilibel briefly chokes before they pulled her into their arms with a relatively calm posture. Now aren't you the violent one? Alas, your murderous attempt wounds me so, when all I request is your affection. Why won't they put me down? Put me down! Put me down! <laughs> Ha, ah, silly little bell. You look as if you want to say something to me. Use your words. Hmm? I can't help you if you don't talk to me. Little bell suddenly starts crying. Rufius freezes up at this and drops her out of sh shock. Little bell collapses on into the ground. Little bell, please tell me what's wrong. Tell them what's wrong. Do it. Save number two. Kill them, kill them. <laughs> Little Bell slipped a f couple of fucking butcher knives out of her marshmallow like sleeves and suddenly springs at Arifius, tries to slash him. Arifius grabbed the two knives by the tips of the blades and tearing them free from the angry girl's hands with almost no effort, dangled the two knives just out of her reach. Uh, 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 uh. Stop it! Give them back! So you can talk. Of course I can fucking talk! Now give me my knives! <laughs> Say please! <laughs> Little Bell helplessly dropped up and down trying to reach the knives dangling from the demon's hands. She couldn't reach despite her best attempts as she kept hopping on her tiptoes. Tippy toes. Aw, you're so short and weak. Lilla Bell sees. And suddenly stomps as hard as she can onto Rufius' Rif foot. Uh, shit. Their guard lowers as they drop the knives. However, before Lilla Bell can retrieve them, Rufius kicks her to the ground with th their free foot. Mm -ack. Sliding beside her, Rufius sits next to her with a smug look. Gently, they lift her, her chin up to face them. Are you ready to give up and have a pleasant date with me? Save. No, we're not ready. Lola Bell tried lunging for her knives, but Rufius practically flipped her over with their hand against her jaw. The demon kicked at her with her, their foot and her body crumpled around the area of impact. Why are you so dedicated to fighting me? We're on a date, no need to fight. They knelt over Little Bell. I love you after all. I hate you. So peculiar. Your friend of flirting seems to be violence. I'm not flirting. Hush, hush. I guess I should respect you, shouldn't I? Hmm, maybe this formality and coupley, coupley stuff is overwhelming you. Do you miss the simplicity of our old dates? They moved their face closer to Lola Bell's. Gah! We've never been on a fucking date before. Sure we have. Plenty. Name one, you fucking bitch. Oh, I'm a bitch, am I? Someone kill me. Over my dead body. I mean, if you fucking let me kill you. Anyway, we've been on plenty of dates. 689 to be exact. Da 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 da. So you've also been counting. Of course I have. 
Did you prefer the, uh, those more casual murder-based dates? Yeah. Never bring me to some place like this again. Ever. I understand. Little Belle awkwardly got to her feet and just left. As she pondered on how they could possibly conceive any of this as a date, Lily Bell muttered asserted expletives under her breath. How could this bitch think she liked them? They literally made her want to die. In a way, she wondered if she could give up and see if they'd get less interested. Eh, fuck it. She would kill them if it was the last thing she did. Excuse me. After this, the two engaged in constant dates. I mean, if you could fucking call them dates, but one day Lilla Bell realized she couldn't beat them alone. But she saw a team. Enemies end. Oh, okay. Calm down and try to be rational. Do I really need to calm down? Oh, uh, how do I calm down? Breathing is too hard. I can't do that. Um. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Uh, did I startle you? I mean, you kidnapped me and forced me to go to this fucking what even this is this? Uh, where the fuck is this? Oh, that, that. We're at Cuddly Couples Cuddle Buddies Cuddly Diner. Yeah, but we're not a couple. We're not? I want to fucking kill you. Huh. You're so cute when you make jokes like that. It's not a joke, it's a fucking promise. Who even said I'd go on a date with you? Oh, well, when I was at, in your house a few days ago, I asked your mother if you'd go on a date with me. And the saint she is, she said, I see no reason to stop you. Isn't that sweet? She's quite the cupid. Yeah, I'm going in my house! Ah, uh, but your mom loves to let me in. And my mom is a bitch. Stop going in my house! Murphy stares at her, pouting as they lean closer in. Alright, I understand. I'll ask your dad next time. <laughs> Egg, leave me the fuck alone. C calm down. I'm asking your dad, not you. I'll make sure to ask people who aren't you from now on. I don't want to bother you. After all, you're the person my heart belongs to. This is romantic. Can you not fuck take a fucking hint? May I have a hint? I'm not sure how to respond. Can I just fucking leave? We haven't even started the date yet. Save. Stay, I fucking guess. Whatever, well, try and make this not miserable for me, and maybe I'll stick around. Uh, you and your jokes. Uh, um, so... So, like, this is a date, right? What do we do? You literally stopped me. You should know full well what I know nothing of date about dating. I, um... Oh yeah, you're a complete creep, of course. You've never been on a date. The magical girl grumpily folded her arms as she rolled her eyes. Well, we should make conversation, of course. Mm-hmm. About? Uh, well, if you don't know what we're doing, I'll just leave. Wait. Okay, well, how about this? What's that magical girl show you keep talking about? I'm a magical girl. You're my villain. Oh, why would I be a villain? That's silly. Save. There's so many choices here. Gosh. There's so many reasons. Because I want you dead. I want to violently kill you and stab you to death. How have you not still not fucking caught on? Ugh, you're such a piece of shit. <laughs> Aren't you a little old to bully the MB you love? I hate you. Yep, you love me. Well, anyway, 
What's your favorite thing? Oh my gosh. I have a few. Marshmallows. Must be why you're as cute as a marshmallow. Your outfit kind of resembles a marshmallow in some ways. I, I know. Well, how about you ask me a question now? I don't wanna. Well, if you do, we can finish up our date. Fine. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Alright. Why can't you respect me for once? You don't think I respect you? You don't. You never have. Artifice looked bewildered as if possibility never occurred to them. Um, but I'm always thinking of you above every everything else. If that's not respect, what is? That's obsession. Obsession? Do I have to spell everything out for you? You know, you won't listen to me no matter how hard I try because you don't respect me. You treat me like some sort of fucking object. Do I? Mm-hmm. What? Well, how do I respect you? Why should I teach you? You've been a nightmare to me for years. Well, for starters, harassing me and not leaving me alone, regardless of my complaints, is disrespectful. Orpheus pulls out a notepad and they scribble notes in it. They look up at Little Bell expectantly as she seems somewhat confused at the fact she's being listened to. And, uh, you can't keep breaking into my house or doing things with my items without my permission. Orpheus eagerly scribbles this down. You can't talk over me and ignore my opinions ever. Have I done that? Yes. Oh, long clock. Overall, treat me like a person instead of an idea. I'm sorry I didn't treat you correctly to begin with. It's whatever. No, I should have listened to you long before now. You don't have to say yes, but if I could possibly have another chance. And mean the world to me. Why should I say yes? Well, if you say no, I'll leave you alone and respect that. And I'll give you one chance. That's it. Little Bell let out a loud exhale at this moment. At this, and basically furred her eyebrows. <sighs> Friday at 6, you can pick the place, we'll have a nice date, and maybe things will evolve from there. I don't fucking care. But if you treat me in a way I don't like, you're dead to me. I won't let you down. The days went by after this event as the little bell chose to give the demon another chance. And shockingly, the date went really pleasant overall. The two went to a carnival. Orypheus even won her fr a frog stuffed animal at one of the booths. Overall, it was a cute, overly perfect date. And the two ended up being perf really happy together, moving forward. Fantasy end. That went really well. Right, I need to grab another beer. I already downed the first one. I'll be right back. last time. That's the one I did. Why did you think I'd want to date you? Oh, that's easy, silly, because you're my girlfriend. I never agreed to that. Little Bell, dear, we've been dating for a long time. Your jokes are so cute, but also... Really idiotic. And this date is so special because I was going to get, ask you something really important. 
Please don't ask. I'd say no to whatever it is. Oh, so you don't even want to know. You just accept? Do your ears work? Mm hmm Of course they do. Da, 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 da. No, they don't. Well, after this date, we're going to move in together. Da, 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 da. Heart. Da, 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 da. Oh, whoa! Da, 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 da. Says who? Me. Also, I got your parents' blessing on this. My parents are both not me, and they're fucking stupid. Are you in denial? This is going to be exciting, Lilabelle. Now, would you like cake to celebrate? No. Waiter. Can I get some cake for me and my lovely... Rufus glances over to Lil' Bell as she start suddenly darting to the exit. One second. They quickly rush over to Lil' Bell and roughly grabbing her wrist, enough to cause a red mark, drag her back to the table. Cake, please. The waiter heads off, and Orypheus cutely smiles at Lil' Bell, who does not want to be there. After the date, the two went home together. Lil' Bell didn't have much, say in it, much of a say in it, but when she tried to leave, Orypheus blocked every escape. She incessantly kept trying, including stealing their, excuse me, stealing their phone or trying to break out of a window. <laughs> She even tried flushing herself down the toilet. But every single attempt ended with Orypheus finding her and bringing her back. Oh, you can scroll up and it goes backwards. If you leave, I won't be there for you. It hurt me so much if you got hurt. I want to see my friends. They don't care about you like I do. And they don't think I'm good for you. I want to see them. Leave me alone. If you don't shut up. I love when you try to act angry with me. It's cute, but you need to learn how to be obedient and loving, at least occasionally. You're getting better at it, I'm noticing, but sweetie, don't disobey me. I love you. I love you too. That's right, very good. You're such a good girl. It took a long time, but Little Bell gave up. Together forever and... Oh wow, <laughs> that got dark. I mean, fucking honestly, I've never seen anyone who makes me want to die as much as you. D don't be crazy, Lil' Bell. No, really, I'm not fucking joking. Name a single time you've treated me with the most minuscule helping of respect. Or if you just glided closer vacantly, lifting Lil' Bell's chin up with a swift motion. Every moment of every day, you are my everything. That's not respect. You stalk me. Rufius's expression twitches. You harass my friends. Rufius' hand gets rougher against her chin. You never listen to anything I've ever said. Rufius suddenly starts lifting her up simply just by her chin as she, her body limply hangs. You hurt me without even thinking about it. I don't hurt you. Yes, you do. No, I don't. You're hurting me right now. Rufus glances at their hand and back at her before a brief realization hits them. And with a flick of the wrist, they toss the little belt on into a wall. Getting claustrophobically close, they smile. I is that better? It's better, right? I love you. No, you don't. Rufus roughly grips her shoulder. Yes, I do. A crunchy sound is heard as Little Bell contorts in pain. If you love me, you'd leave me alone. Ah, uh, no, no, that's not what love is. Letting something you love go is false. True love is never letting someone leave you. Because that, what is love without someone you love? Stop it! Stop what? Their hand shifts to a more vital spot of Lilabelle as she lets out labor breaths. 
Sally little pad, you're so precious. Why are you crying? Good. Do you have something to say? Rufio smiles cutely as the humanoids seem to limpen within their grips. A bluish hue covered it, as the devilish beings, as the devilish beings seemed oblivious. Let's get you home. You've had a long day. Rufio's deluded themselves to think everything is okay. The smell of rot began to increase more and more. They couldn't get rid of it. They couldn't get themselves to part with their one true love. They couldn't accept the truth of their actions as they absorbed themselves in the filthy fantasy. They deserved not one ounce of pity. After all, it was their fault. All their fault what they had done. And someone wasn't with us anymore. Dead end. Ah, we're getting darker. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> do you enjoy toying with me? Oh, well, of course I do. After all, isn't that what our d d dates consist of? Dates, plural. Mm-hmm. What the fuck are you even talking about? I don't consider this even consider this a date. Uh, what? I'm sorry, but what do you mean, little dear? We're enemies. You're my nemesis. Ah, uh, you're so delicate, dedicated to that little role play. It's truly adorable, you know. Role play. I'm not some deviant freak like you. Nonsense, little bell. Roleplay isn't a deviant activity. Tons of people roleplay. Some people even roleplay as cute little farmer people from farming games. It's all good fun. Yeah, okay. I don't fucking care. Would you prefer if I roleplayed as evil for you? You literally don't need to. I've never seen anyone be as utterly scummy as you in my entire life. Save for you. Oh, excuse me. Uh, oh, I'm so I'm roleplaying that well without even noticing it. I love you so much. Murphy leans in as if trying for a kiss before Lil Bell tries to kick them away, but instead propels herself into the floor. Mm. Are you okay? Oh dear, was that too forward of me? Gosh, are you not interested in super romancy stuff? Uh, yeah. What fucking ever? Just stop talking to me. Wait, is that why you roleplay us as enemies? Because you're uncomfortable being vulnerable? Yes. Oh dear, if you had only told me sooner, I would have never played planned such a fancy date. I'm so sorry, little Bell. If ever you could forgive me, it'd mean the world. Their eyes water as they look at little Bell pleadingly. Well, I'm going home. As she grumbled this, she pushed her feet and walked off as the words Prius's eyes followed her. As she pondered on how they could possibly conceive anything, any of this as a date, Lil Bell muttered assorted expletives under her breath. How could this bitch think she liked them? They literally made her want to die. In a way, wondered. In a way, she wondered if she could, she should give up and see if they get less interested. Wait, we got this, Emmy. Eh, fuck it, she'd kill him if it's the last thing they did. After this, the two engaged in constant dates. I mean, if you could, you fucking call them dates, but... One day, Lil Bell realized she couldn't beat them alone. Okay, we've seen that. So you can get the same in multiple ways, I guess. Alright. It's been two years of you fucking tormenting- of you tormenting me. Why can't you just get- Why can't you just get the hint? Uh, what? Tormenting? Now that's a strong word, little Bell. Do you even know what that means, my love? That term means deliberately causing you ha causing harm in a repetitive manner that might feel unending in the moment. Have I ever hurt you? Yes. Oh, when? That time when you slammed a door in my face and I went flying into a wall and made a dent in it? Oh, well, that's just one time. And that time when I was crying and you 
you have look telling me to look at you and you stretch my eyelids open and poke me in the eye on accident? Oh yeah, you had two eyes back then. In that time when I was hanging out with my friends and you tried to drop kick them out of the way and you drop kicked me instead. Which even if you had drop kicked them, that that had been fucked up. Well, there are such minor occurrences. But you know what the worst torment of all is? Well, of course I do. I don't want us, you to be harmed. Whatever it is, I'll try to make things better. To fix it for you. The worst part of it all is that every single day, I'm reminded by your ugly face that you exist. That no matter how much I scream at you, you'll never leave me alone. No matter what I do, you just never stop. And after all this time, I've never so much as fucking nicked you, much less ripped out your stupid fucking heart. And if I could do that, then I crush it so it never be for me again. I... You know what the worst thing about my life is? That you're in it. So, that's how you feel. Of course that's how I fucking feel. Why has it taken me a hundred of fucking attempts at screaming at it to you for you to listen? Oh. I didn't mean... I don't care if you meant it or not. The constant reminder of you makes me sick. Per perhaps I should go. You think? I love you. If you say that again, I'll rip your, out your intestines. Rufius hesitates and her body goes limper as they back up for a bit. Before they suddenly break into an all-out dash of the diner, leaving Lilabelle to seethe. After this date, the magical girl Lilabelle TV show came to a swift end. After all, a series can't persist without a villain, and Rufius was gone for good. In the following days, the devilish being proceeded to avoid Lilabelle, stayed out of her space and everything. Honestly, this was probably healthy for both of them. After all, Arupius really didn't seem to understand her boundaries, and wasn't making enough steps to learn to respect them. They'd be happier like this, eventually. Lilabelle proceeded on with her life. Over time, her strong passion to violently murder Arupius faded. Her stress seemed to decrease significantly as well. Arifius didn't really get over it the easiest, but after seeing Lilabelle in that state, they didn't want to prolong hurting her anymore. Separation end. Okay. Load! Okay, I think we did all those now. <laughs> My nose is stuffing up. Okay, we did marshmallows. Frogs. Oh, I thought you liked bunnies. Um, I promote a cereal that is about lily pads. I like frogs. Rufius licked the little bell up and down. Yeah, how could I get that wrong? I only have bunnies on that outfit because it came with my magical gold contract. Oh. Well, how about you ask me a question now? I don't wanna. Well, if you do, we can finish up our date. Fine. We did that. We did all those. Drawing. Oh, really? I didn't even know. And I thought I knew everything about you. Oh, I draw pictures of you and violently destroy them. I burned a few yesterday on a skewer. Oh, so you do think of me. Are you stupid? Well, how about you ask me a question now? I don't wanna. Well, if you do, we can finish up with our date. Fine. You're really fantastic at that, aren't you? That must be why your dress is so adorable on you. This bow is literally falling off. So? Just stop worshipping me. Ah, you're so perfect when you complain. Hmm. Well, how about you ask me a question now? I don't want to. Well, if you do, we can finish up our date. Fine. Alright, we did all those. That was nice. So what's before that? Uh, I 
think that's the one I did. Yeah. <laughs> Try to kill my friends, killing my friends at least 16 times. One of my friends is in a wheelchair thanks to you. Huh, that was an accident. Besides, are you even a real magic girl? You don't even have a transformation. I sewed a fucking dress and I have a fucking knife. And you're a fucking demon de dedicated to ruining my life. Oh, that rhymes. <laughs> I don't want to ruin your life. I want to improve it. By inserting myself into it. There's the catch. Well, anyway. What's your favorite thing? We did that. You're a creep. Aw, that's not nice. You don't see me telling that you that you're not a magical girl and that you're actually just a sad, stressed, angry girl that needs me to make her happy. I don't go around telling you that you made up this story in your head to make yourself happier. Well, anyway, what's your favorite thing? We did that. When? You broke into my house a few days ago. Your mom let me in. You were going through my belongings. Well, obviously your friends won't tell me what kind of things you like. And I wanted to find out so I could give you a cute gift. I don't want to touch anything you give me. You don't mean that. Rivie sighed. <sighs> well, anyway, what's your favorite thing? I think we only have one path to go down now. Uh, try to leave. Little Belle gets to her feet and starts stomping off when suddenly Arifius grabs her by the wrist. No, my lovely Lily. She yanks her hand to try and leave their grasp. You aren't allowed to leave. We haven't even had an appetizer. And I have a gift for you. Let me guess, it's creepy. Leave me alone so I can go plan your fucking funeral. You care about me that much? I've only thought far enough to our 12th anniversary and 6th adopted child. I didn't even think about our inevitable deaths. Lilibel, you mean so much to me. I'm sorry for not doing enough on my end. I just... Uh, let fucking go of me. I'd rather die than marry you. What? Let me let go. I... Does she mean that? All I ever did was love her, and stalk her, and stalk her friends, and steal her things, and sneak into her house repeatedly, and harass her constantly despite her threatening your death. I feel terrible. How do I fix this? Save. That's how you fix this. You save. She'll change her mind. Yeah, she's just in a bad mood. I'll fix it though. I'll fix her. Rufius gently used their hand to spin the girl in into their arms. Ah, it's so cute how you lied to me. Princess, I promise to never give you anything but the utmost of my love. I don't want that. Nonsense. Oh, oh, oh. Here we go. Rufius gently gives Lilibel a small bunny charm. I got this for you. Cute, huh? I want to go home. Oh, of course. You look so tired. It's pretty late, isn't it? They lifted her up into their arms gently. Uh, eh? Mm hmm. Let's go home. Little Belle attempted to escape their grasp, but to no avail. After that date, the two went home together. Little Belle didn't have much say in it. But when she tried to leave, oh, we got this, Sydney. Argue. No, she's taking advantage of my kindness. I sacrificed everything for her. I would do anything for her. There's another person, isn't there? So, who is it? I... what? It's someone else, right? No, you won't ever leave me alone. I... love you? Well, I don't love you.
How hard is it to f this? How hard is this to fucking understand? Artifice grabs at her shoulder tightly. You don't mean that. Yes, I do. Shut up. No, I won't. Just leave. Artifice slams her into a wall. Why can't you learn when to stop joking? I just wanted us to have a happy date. But you. Bam. Ruined. Bam. Everything. Bam. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, 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 bam. Hmm. Ah. Yeah. Just finally tell me you love me. Arufius shakes her body. Y you're fine, right? Little Bell? We're, we're going home. Arufius' hands shake as they lift the limp body up and cradle it into their arms. A few tears drip from their eyes. Arufius deluded themselves to think everything was okay. Oh, we got this, Emmy. That's bad, man. That's a bad ending. Believe her. I didn't know you felt that way. Rufius likes go over wrist. I tell you every single day in graphic detail how I want to fucking kill you. How do you... How don't you get that? I should go. Yeah, you fucking should. Rufius glances her way one more, but slowly walked away. Okay, this is the separation ending. I think we only have one more path to go down, and then we're done. I like this game though, it's kinda cute. It's nice. It's kinda fucked up too though, <laughs> so... Start crying. Little Belle suddenly begins crying an extremely large amount. She's shaking and panicking. L Little Belle? Are you okay? Please don't cry, I was only trying to make you happy. I didn't mean to upset you. Shit, shit, you fucked this up. She was supposed to be happy. What did you do wrong? Um, uh, get her to stop crying. Get her to stop crying. What do I do? Save. That's what you do. You save. Panic. Little Bell? Little Bell, are you okay? Uh, oh dear, oh dear, this is not good. Duct tape, maybe duct tape? Shush, shush, that's scruttle panic. Don't worry, if I duct tape your mouth shut, everything will be all fine. Uh, stop hyperventilating. If you breathe through your mouth after I put the tape on, you might die. Arufius turns around to shuffle through the rag. Lilibel grasps at a fork, however, and suddenly lunges at Arufius from behind, only for her head to be smashed into the table before she could reach them. Arufius didn't even look at her direction as they held her down. <laughs> ah, there it is. Devilish pricks spun around gracefully and swerving their hand under Lil Bell's chin lifted the girl up a bit. Her hands- oh, there is duct tape. Wow. Her hands were gripping to try yanking at them or hitting them, but Rufia's arms were too long and they- as they gently taped over her mouth. Perfect. Oh, and you stop crying. Your little eyebrows are so clenched. Have I ever told you I love everything about you? Rufius gently pulled her onto their lap. With a gentle hug, as if they didn't hurt her moments ago, they seemed almost unaware. A hand carefully stroked at her hair as they nuzzled Lil Little Bell into their chest. All better, right? Don't worry, I'm with you. I promise you'll never need to cry. A muffled sound was audible. Hush, hush. The two sat there for a while, Rufius's arms keeping Little Bell from struggling too much. I'm really happy we went on a date together. Little Bell's eyes start to tear up again as Arifia's claws fingers. Excuse me. Gently wipe every tear aside. After that date, the two went home together. Little Bell didn't have much saying it. The same ending. I think we've gotten all the endings. We're just going down the rest of the past now. Gently reassured. Little Bell. She doesn't respond. Rufius briefly pauses before gently putting her hand on hers. She tenses up at this but starts to go a bit stiller. 
She slowly starts shaking less. No matter what, she avoids looking around anywhere close to Orypheus. Philabelle, are you okay? I can't talk right now. It's okay. Take your time. I messed up here somehow. I don't know what I did wrong, but... I want to make it right, okay? After a few moments, the little bell glances their way. Why do you do this? Do what? Why do you keep dragging me around and... and messing with me and fucking... talking to my friends? But you keep acting like you don't have a clue. You... Urgh. Am I bothering her? I just... I just wish you'd die already. You don't mean that. Don't tell me what I mean. Just... just leave me alone. No, I want to know what I'm doing wrong. Well, I don't know. Let's start with how you fucking kidnapped me. What? No, I was just escorting you to our date. Mm-hmm. I'm glad we could clear up all that confusion, sweetie. I never agreed to go on a date with you. Oh, well, you're here now, so we ought to make the best of it. Whatever, fine, but if you piss me off, I'll harvest your fucking organs. Aw, but sweetie, dissection always terrifies you. We don't even have that class together. It's college, sometimes I sit in. Never mind. What do you do on a fucking date anyway? It's, uh, um, so... So, like, this is a date, right? What do we do? You literally stalked me. You should know full well I know nothing about dating. I, um... Oh yeah, you're a complete creep. Of course, you've never been on a date. Met a girl grumpily folded her arms as she rolled her eyes. Well, we should make conversation, of course. Mm -hmm. About? Uh... Well, if you don't know what we're doing, I'll just leave. Wait. Okay, well, how about this? What's that magical girl you show you keep talking about? I'm a magical girl and you're my villain. Oh, why would I be a villain? That's silly. I've already done these. Do do do. Last pathway, boys. Tell her how much you love her. Uh, um, Lilla Bell, I just want you to know that my love for you is undying. I love you more than existence itself, and that shall never change. Lilla Bell starts crying louder. Much, much louder. This is not going well. Oh dear. Orpheus suddenly hugs Lilla Bell, which causes her to aggressively shove them away. Lilla Bell appears to be attempting to speak. Orpheus gives her a moment to compose herself. What? What is your fucking deal? Don't touch me. I, um... Why won't you just fucking die, you fucking shithead? Uh... You don't mean that. If you get closer to me, I'll stab you repeatedly. N nonsense. They move closer and, uh... Lilla Bell attempts to stab them in the eye. But they sidestep and shove her into the table. Sweetie, calm down. It's all okay. Wait, why are you bleeding? I will kill you. It's not time for joking. Are you okay? I'm not joking. Fucking die. But I love you. Stop lying to me. You're evil. You need to die. You need to... I hate you. Oh. Haha. <laughs> you... You are so always so funny. Gah. I, I'll, just, I'll just leave you alone. Um, I'll tell the waiter to put this on my tab. I, uh... Never mind. Review sleeves. Separation ending. Alright guys, well that's all the pathways. As And if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Bye! That's my done save. See y'all next time.